Hello everyone, welcome to another installment of WGS TV right here on YouTube.com slash Russell Gamer and it's FX TV. I'm the Russell Gamer, don't leave only Boy Trout, coming to you from my new little Android tablet thing I've gotten here to kind of uh, fill the uh, void of the laptop. You know, if you guys remember during the uh, Great American Bash DVD review, I, I did mention the fact that my laptop screen cracked in half and it's going to be a, it's going to be a little while for it to be repaired. And the screen went green for some reason. I have no idea why. But uh, again, this is a uh, a new device to me. I'm not exactly sure, you know, how, how it's working, you know, if it's going to come out good or not. But I think the main focus here, guys, is just, you know, just to get my review across. And I'm hoping that this, uh, what's it's called the next book, I hope it just works out fine. So this is the uh, Monday Night Raw review for the week of September 1st, 2014. Opening up Monday Night Raw with the highlight reel. With Chris Jericho, um, with his guest Randy Orton, but he comes out with the authority and uh, basically to say that he doesn't believe that John Cena should have the shot against Brock Lesnar at Night of Champions, and he's thinking about naming a new number one contender. And you know they go through the list. Um, um, you know Randy Orton saying it should be him. Kane said you know there's some I suppose a demon who could put his mask back on and unleash that the demons of hell upon the beast. Then Seth Rollins who was we got quite the pop in the reaction, but yeah, we did find out that they're in his hometown. So, yeah, I, I was uh, quite a little shocked to hear that little pop for Seth Rollins. And then when Triple H said that John Cena's career being ended by Brock Lesnar and I had a chance would not be best for business, I kind of asked you guys on the Facebook page if you guys agree with not. I didn't get any responses. But, uh,. <laughs> Anywho, uh, John Cena said, you know what, he's he deserves it. Um, then they start making references to Roman Reigns, which to one point I think the, uh, you know, when Randy Orton was, uh, when they were addressing the whole Roman Reigns issue, you know, they kind of missed the cue to cue up Roman Reigns' uh, entrance music, which kind of made, threw everything off for about five seconds. Um, but um, anyway, uh, Long story short, the purpose of the segment was to set up the main event, which was a six-man tag uh, announced by Triple H, John Cena, Roman Reigns, and Chris Jericho taking on Randy Orton, Seth Rollins, and Kane. Um, following that, we had the uh, Intercontinental Champion, Dolph Ziggler, teaming up with the United States Champion, Sheamus, to take on Cesaro and The Miz with the uh, with Damian Mizdow. And one of the things I uh, I kind of may mention, too, on the, the WGSCV Facebook page is so they kill off Damian Sandow's gimmick of being the intellectual savior of the masses to be the Miz's flunky. And uh, I go on to say in my comment that I think Alex Raleigh should be pissed. <laughs> and I think he should. I don't know if you guys would agree with that, but you know that's just my opinion on it. Um, the fans really wanted Ziggler in the matchup at one point, which was kind of a hunch in my opinion, but... Um, as expected, I, you know, I kind of thought that Miz would try to use his uh, stun double Mizdow, and he, uh, Damian Mizdow ends up just get hit, and hit with the zigzag by Ziggler, but then it left him open, wide open to the Miz's skull crushing finale as uh, Miz and Cesaro pick up the win. So, yeah, I kind of, uh, I kind of expected that, half hearted expected to see, you know, the usage of Mizdow. You know, it's. Pretty much just, you know, even though it's a different gimmick by The Miz, I think it's still right around the same thing that he was doing when he had Alex Raleigh with him. You know, really not that much of a difference, except just for different people. WWE did a feature of a, a, a series of, well, I would say a series, but they did uh, two segments calling Growing Up Bella. And it was just Nikki Bella sitting there just recanting you know, different aspects of her life. Um, you know, saying that Brie Bella was better than me, you know, you know, anytime I did something good, Brie Bella would get all the attention and so on and so forth. And to me, it was just really melodramatic in my opinion. Um, I think, you know, it was just WWE trying to force this angle down our throats. It's one of the things I said on the Facebook page and, and DS version on the page, <coughs> excuse me, on the page kind of agreed with me saying, the only thing wrong with this angle is the bad acting. I like that Nikki is healed and showing us how Brie was, quote, supposedly. So, mm, I don't know. But up next, we had a, a matchup that was supposed to feature the Divas of Total Divas, Rosa Mendez, Cameron, and Eva Marie 
taking on Layla, Naomi, and Summer Rae. What about a waste of five minutes of my time? I mean, nothing was settled. The matchup gets thrown out. But they had uh, Naomi, Layla, and Summer Rae send Cameron, Eva Marie, and Rosa Mendez out of the ring. And that was pretty much the end of that. So, if you really wanted to showcase the Divas, have them put on a better match, because that was utter crap. But then again, it's the WWE Divas. You know, it's not Paige or Natalia or AJ Lee. You know, you expect something good out of that, but you did not get that. Up next, a matchup where they said that it featured about 1,400 pounds of humanity. It's uh, Mark Henry and Big Show taking on Eric Rowan and Luke Harper. And all I can say is I just hope it, it, WWE always has to make sure that their ring is structurally supported because that's a lot of weight. A lot of weight to be, uh, to say that. But um, it was a unique match, but I kind of figured that they would kind of uh, insert Rusev in one way or form or another. And they did. Henry was going for the World's Strongest Slam on Luke Harper. Uso came in the ring, super kicked him in the face, causing a disqualification. So they had to do something to kind of, uh, you know, pick up the slack and pick up the uh, the angle with uh, Rusev and Mark Henry. Paul Heyman comes out to cut a promo about Night of Champions and John Cena and what happened with John Cena. And, you know, I've said it many a time, and I'm going to say it again. Paul Heyman, Barack Lesnar would not be as, quote, relevant in the company if he did not have Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman is golden on the microphone. I mean, he can talk up anything, and he proved that on Monday Night Raw when he talked up the segment about him, his client, Brock Lesnar, and John Cena. That's all I can say about that. If Lesnar did not have Paul Heyman, would anybody really give two shits about him? I wouldn't. But uh, as I get a message on my... Uh, my iPad, my little uh, next book thing, that's one of the things it does. It's uh, Jack Swagger with the return of uh, Zeb Coulter taking on Curtis Axel. Uh, Axel just basically uh, has the Patriot Lock put, put on him. He taps out. Swagger picks, picks up the win. And then out comes Bo Dallas to kind of further the angle that, you know, that Swagger disappointed many Americans. And he brought out three people who said they were extremely disappointed about what what Swagger losing, you know, one person said he failed his citizenship test. Uh, another person said her kid wanted to be like Vladimir Putin. And, you know, do they always have to show Putin's face every time they mention him in the WWE? Is that like a little royalty thing that they, they give to him to just to show his mug on national TV? You know, I just don't understand that. But um, that, that's pretty much what it, it was. And one of the things I may mention on the... Uh, Facebook pages, uh, I thought the Growing Up Bella segments were overdramatic. Um, I think what Bo Dallas did was just absolutely, utterly ridiculous. You know, I used to be a big fan of the Bo Lee thing, because I know we'd get to you, James, but uh, it just really didn't sell, in my opinion. I know WWE's just trying to do something with Bo Dallas, but I don't know. It's just something about that segment I did not, you know, I just didn't agree with. Um, up next, Adam Rose taking on Titus O'Neil with Heath Slater. Oh, man, I feel so bad with Heath Slater. I just feel so bad for the guy. Uh, he got beat up by the bunny from the Exotic Express. He got beat up by the Easter bunny of the Exotic Express. I can't believe I actually said that twice. But that's exactly what took place and what transpired with him on Monday Night Raw. Adam Rose rolls up Titus O'Neil to get the win, but... Man, I just felt so bad for that, for Heath Slater. I mean, he got beat up by a bunny. You know, one person even made mention uh, on the Facebook page at first, you know, he got beat up by the the uh, El Torito, the midget bull, and now he's getting beat up by a, uh, a bunny. Weird. That's all I can say. Uh, up next, it was Rusev taking on Zack Ryder, and, you know, Again, you're talking about a person I feel bad for. Ryder had a humongous push a couple of years ago, and and now he's just a jobber again. Uh, made short work of him with the accolade, but uh, then uh, Mark Henry comes out wanting revenge for what happened earlier in the night, but Rusev takes off. Henry gets on the microphone, so you know what? He opens up. He opened up an international wing in the Hall of Pain, and that Rusev will be the first inductee 
into that international wing. But uh, up next, Stephanie McMahon had big news for Nikki Bella, who was going to grant her a Divas Championship match, which prompts AJ Lee to come out and say, you know what, hold on, hold on. I'm the number one contender for the Divas Championship. Then the then Brie Bella comes out and said, you know, is that... Is this what this is all about? You know, a Divas Championship match? You turn your back on our family because you wanted that? Of course, Nikki Bella straight, yes. And start making derogatory comments about Daniel Bryan and their marriage and whatnot. Paige comes up because, you know, they're talking about the Divas Champion. you got to have the Divas Championship out there. The Divas Champion out there. We're going to talk about the Divas Champion. And uh, Nikki said, you know what? I'm willing to forgive you if you do what you did for Daniel Bryan. And that was quit the WWE. Brie Bella turned around. Starts to get upset, and Nikki is just egging her on. And then, next you know, Brie pushes Nikki into Paige. AJ Lee then picks up the Divas Championship, starts skipping around until she comes face to face with Stephanie McMahon. Stephanie said, Hand, hand over the Divas Championship to me. And then Paige gets it. And, you know, you know bottom line is I think that WWE is going to go towards a, a fatal four way for the Divas Championship. And um, on the I may mention that on the Facebook page, and James the Big Easy kind of agrees with me. He says, unfortunately, yes, another sad thing is I called this when I was in a call with Lance, um, incomparable Lance Moss from YouTube.com, so Lance Moss TV. After me, Stephanie said she was going to give Nikki something that would make her happy. Yeah, so, yeah, I kind of feel, I kind of agree with James on that one. Up, up next, uh, we did get a couple of announcements for next week's Monday Night Raw. Next week's Monday Night Raw. It's shaping it to look really, really good, y'all. Um, first off, we got a steel cage match. Chris Jericho and Bray Wyatt. That should be very interesting in itself. And then a rematch from, from SummerSlam. We have Randy Orton taking on Roman Reigns. So that should be really interesting to see where they go next. That. But up next, the, uh, the furthering of the angle now between Gold, Gold and Stardust and the Usos over the Tag Team Championship. Of course, Goldust tried to do the whole thing again. Uh, it was Goldust versus Jimmy Uso. And just like on Friday Night SmackDown, Goldust tried to apologize. Uso's not buying it. But uh, it, it ended up with Stardust, you know, with distractions. Um, helping Goldust get the win with the final cut. And then after the match was over, they went after Jay Uso's injured knee again. Stardust hitting uh, his knee with a steel chair. Kind of hampering the champions. Thus trying to, you know, further push the heel angle for Golden Stardust and, you know, give the champions, the face champions, a, a huge obstacle to overcome. Now, will they keep the championships on the Usos? Um, you know, because this is, we all know this is leading towards a match at Night of Champions. We can all say that with certainty that this is leading towards a match at Night of Champions. So, will they keep it on there? Keep it on them? Who knows? Um, but uh, lastly, on Monday Night Raw this week, we had the... The six-man tag that was announced at the onset of the show, it was John Cena, Chris Jericho, and Roman Reigns taking on Randy Orton, Kane, and Seth Rollins. I, you know, t uh, last night was like my first chance to see the uh, new jacket of sorts of uh, Chris Jericho. All, all I'm going to say is, holy LED, Batman. I mean, yeah. The, wow. I mean, I don't know where Jericho gets his lighter jackets, but good job. Good job. Um, it was a uh, unique match. Um you know, uh, I got to say, you know, kind of figured Cena to go over in his team, and it did. Um, if, er, it was Cena hitting the AA on Kane, and then he tags in Roman Reigns, who spears Kane to pick up the win for the team. On the outside, Cena was in the face of Triple H and Stephanie McMahon, who were there at ringside. Rollins attacks him, and then Cena hits the attitude adjustment, and um, also uh, the uh, MSX Heavyweight Champion Christian Blake wanted me to make mention of the fact that uh, Cena held up a sign. There was two signs to it. Uh, one for you can't see me, and the other one is uh, like tapped out or something like that. And you know, just kind of wanted me to mention the fact that uh, Cena held the sign wrong. He held up the wrong end, the end of the sign on TV. But you know, th that's pretty much how Monday Night Raw ended. So you know, good show. I gotta say, I'm really looking forward to the two big matches that they announced on last night's Monday Night Raw. As far as my overall score is concerned, um, I'm going to go 3.75 out of 5. I thought this was a decent show. Um, really can't see anything bad about it. Um, Jericho's new jacket, very interesting to say the least. Uh, you know, uh, I wonder how many AA batteries it took to light up that sucker. Um, 
that, that would be funny. You took off the jacket, and the next thing you know, inside the jacket, it's just like a hundred double A batteries. And I thought that would be funny. Um, <laughs> um, best match of the night. I'm I'm looking through my list. I'm definitely gonna have to go with with the six man tag. Um, I really thought that was a good match. Um, you know, it had the most crowd involvement. Um, with an honorable mention to Big Show and Mark Henry against Luke Harper and Eric Rowan, you know, despite the uh, predictable interference by Rusev to kind of further their storyline in, in a sense. Um, worst match of the night. What the hell is the point of that Total Divas thing? If you're trying to promote your Total Divas product, have them put on a better match. And a longer match than about five minutes. And that's what we're pretty much accustomed to seeing in the WWE is five-minute matches with their Total Divas. And that was just utter garbage, in my opinion. But that's my opinion on it. What I want to know now from you guys out there, the viewers and subscribers, your thoughts on Monday Night Raw this week. What are your overall scores? What are your picks for best and worst match or segment of Monday Night Raw this week? Definitely want to know what you guys have to say. Be sure you put your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and favorite this video. Guys, I'll try to keep you up to date on the progress of the repair on my laptop. Um, I do know one thing is they did say, uh, you know, since I'm unable to back up any of my uh, data on there because of the screen being cracked and I can't see nothing on there, then I'm going to lose all my data. So I'm going to have to totally replay the second season of The Walking Dead on there. So you're going to have to... When I get my laptop back, you guys are just going to have to bear with me. When I get that done, I'll get that done. I'll, I'll keep you guys up to date on it. But um, other than that, don't forget to please like the Facebook page, facebook.com slash WGSTV. And don't forget to please subscribe to YouTube.com slash WrestleGamer and YouTube.com slash ZFXTV Network if you haven't already. So with that being said, I'm the WrestleGamer. Don't forget to be able to do saying thank you very much for watching.